Good evening. We'll call the 20th meeting of the Valley Unified Board of Directors uh, in order. Uh, roll call. Nick Garrett here. Gerard Castonguet here. Keith Jandro. Mindy Braley here. Josh Desjardin here. Toby Jandro. By Zoom. Robert Boyd, not here. Rose McCory, here. And Gary Sibley. Okay, um, adjustments to the agenda. We do have one small adjustment uh, right at the end of new business. We're going to add an item C just to discuss the next meeting date. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. At this time, is there anybody who would like to address the board for public participation? Seeing as none. Uh, we'll, we'll approve uh, approval of minutes for the 19th meeting, January 12, 2022. I move that we approve the minutes of that meeting. Second. Okay. Rose. Any discussion? Okay, all those that approve minutes. Okay. Approval of financial reports, the quarter financial report. Motion, second. Okay. Any discussion? None. All those in favor? Opposed? I will move over to executive director. So I do want to just take a um, something, and I will be on a large screen. Um, as part of our effort to, um, we did have a discussion in the last board meeting that you know perhaps it is time to re-educate the public on um, why why value and if I still makes sense for our communities. Uh, so I just prepared a small, small presentation. You have the slides in your packet as well. Uh, feel free to ask questions. I'm going to go over this relatively quick just because um, you're all familiar with all this, but uh, we do want to push this out or some version of this out um, to, to our public as best that we can. So starting off with the first slide, why Valley Unified? Uh, just a reminder, Value Unified was not created specifically for the shared regional high school. I know that was the most visual piece of Value Unified, but it's not the only thing that we had when we formed this. The shared regional high school was only one of the seven strategic priorities formed under Value Unified, which also includes maintaining an elementary in each SAU, combining our Value Unified adult and continuing ed, shared administrative structure, optimizing the tech center, optimizing our collaboration with UMFK and Northern Maine Community College, connecting to the community and using technology. Just as a point of you know, a reminder, as each of our districts gets smaller, providing additional educational opportunities while maintaining efficiencies will become more challenging. So first off, enrollment matters. So let's just really briefly talk. We, and we've had these conversations, but I think it's important that we, we take a look at those last three dates um, so we have 2015, 16, that was the year before strategic planning process started. Uh, total enrollment was 16, 12. That wasn't that long ago. This year today, I actually took an enrollment count today. We're at 1464 and you can see uh, the, the uh, numbers for each SAU. The green band is SAB 27, blue is Madawaska, and the gray is SAB 33. And we're projecting uh, 1272 in the year 2526. So why do we share that? Um, because when we're talking about um, student enrollment, we're talking about where our subsidies come from. So fewer students means less state subsidy. Less state subsidy, less state subsidy means a greater necessity to raise local taxes to maintain staffing programs and services. The money doesn't come from the state. We're going to have to ask that it comes from uh, the locals. If we have the inability to raise those local taxes, which we all know in each one of our districts is a challenge to do, 
then that means the only result is a loss of staffing, loss of programs, loss of services. You probably heard me say this throughout the whole value unified process. It's the blueprint we've been following for years. And if we keep following it, not thinking differently, there's not going to be a, a change in the way that we do things. Loss of staffing programs and services simply means less learning opportunities for students. So that's why the enrollment matters. And that's why we keep paying attention to it. And that's why we keep talking about it. Every year we, we submit student enrollment as the first step in getting our ED279 for our state subsidy uh, to, to show us what our subsidy allocations are. As those enrollments go down, the money is, is, is becoming less and less. So we have educational opportunities in Valley Unified that uh, we want to highlight. These are our current uh, ongoing educational opportunities. We have uh, high school alternative, alternative learning. We have high school blended learning opportunities. We have high school selective opportunities. We have an elementary French Acadian culture integrator. We have eighth grade health education at the tech center, eighth grade career education at the tech center, and eighth grade CPE exploration. Um, right now, the future educational opportunities that we are working on uh, that are under development are expanded career focus access to post-secondary learning opportunities, partnering with UMFK, Northern Maine Community College on really expanding what we offer for early college and tying that into career focus. We also want to focus on career focus pathways for all of our high school students. Why are we talking mostly about high school? I think because the critical point is for those high school students, whereas uh, a small elementary school could still meet the needs of students in diverse ways. High school students um, without programs, without electives, without uh, courses that, that uh, allow them to choose what career they may want to go into, um, we're, we're simply rubber stamping each student and saying, well, you're going to fit the same mold as everyone else. So it's not unthinkable to think about um, our high school students having the same math teacher for four years, the same English teacher for four years. That's great if you have a great dynamic math teacher, English teacher, but um, you know it's 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 a challenge. And when filling vacancies, we all know what game has um, has has been going on for quite some time. A vacancy in one district means that we're taking an employee from another district. Um, luckily, we've been able to draw some people from out of the region so as to not steal from each other, but that seems to be uh, what's happening more than, than not. Uh, the future, uh, what, what kind of educational opportunities do we still need to discuss and consider? I, I think one of the biggest things that we're going to need to discuss as three SAUs, as a Value Unified Board, is looking at a shared regional life skills program for our high needs special education students. Um, we are every year increasing our special ed population and the, um, the, the, the diversity between a special ed student who needs academic services and a special ed student that needs so many other services is getting so, so that, that, that span is getting wider and wider. Uh, and, and so we're going to need to talk about um, some kind of shared life skills program uh, in the future so that we don't have to send students to uh, OTC and press style or even downstate to meet their needs. That's something that we're going to have to slowly discuss and get into that, but uh, I think it would be a benefit to the region and, uh, and, and it would definitely benefit each of our districts. We also have some operational efficiencies that were created under Valley Unified. We have a shared administrative team, you, as you know, superintendent, assistant superintendent, director of finance, coordinator of innovation and outreach, curriculum coordinator, food service director, um, just to name a few. I think, well, actually, that's naming all of them. Uh, so those are our shared administrative uh, people. We also have shared teachers uh, or learning facilitators. We have a French, half-time French Acadian integrator, half health, educa health education instructor, half career education instructor, alternative learning instructor. Uh, we share support and collaboration, so we share central office functions as best we can. We share grant writing, we share professional development opportunities, uh, annual training opportunities are shared, and then uh, shared curriculum development. <clears throat> and then we do have uh, shared databases, and this is something that we'll highlight at the end of the meeting here when we go over uh, some of those shared services that we prepared for you. But 
ADS Pro Fund essentially our, our accounting payroll budgeting software that's shared between the three districts it's under Valley Unified, Time Clock Plus, under Valley Unified, Power School is Valley Unified, which also has underneath Power School our K, uh, Swift K-12 alert system, our uh, report creator, our e-forms uh, collector, and our uh, Power School test server. Um, that's all in that same umbrella. We have Empower Learning, which is another elementary student information system. Our library system, uh, Follow Destiny, is under Valley Unified. Kumono Cloud, which helps data sync between Power Schools with the translator between programs. So that's under Valley Unified. Otis Online, which is our staff development, uh, online professional development suite. That's shared. And then our frontline education, recruiting, and hiring suite that just came online. Is also shared under Valley Unified. We have shared software, QuickBooks, Renaissance Freckle, that's math and reading for the elementary kids, Land School, which is a classroom management piece uh, for our teachers, and then Labster, and then uh, shared technology services with our Kids Meet Wi Fi bus service and our DMR radio system. So, as you can see, a lot of sharing going on, and because we share, we share the cost of all of those which falls under financial considerations. Um, so when we're looking at financial considerations, we have to remember that a lot of these things were put in place because of the three big grants that we got back in 2017, 18, and 19. Um, educational efficiencies and opportunity, 635,000. Then we had FedEx 2, uh, 700, almost 16,000. And then FedEx 3, 1.2 million. We spent half of FedEx 3. Uh, in, in our work with uh, some programs and then our uh, site selection engineering. And then we had to turn back the rest of that uh, almost 800,000. We had to send back to the state uh, under FedEx 3. But those were the, uh, the foundation for a lot of these shared services and uh, shared programs and shared staffing. And then also we have, because we are part of an education service center, we get annual subsidies. 55% uh, of the state average for part-time and full-time superintendent. So this year, our allocation was 76,651. That's what's coming up in next year. Uh, full, full cost for financial software, uh, that's $54,000. Cost for power school, direct pay by the DOE, but depending on the size of your school district, Emory, I'd ballpark that, 8,000 to 12,000. That seems to be about right uh, based on what we used to pay. Now we don't have to pay that. And then uh, we, each of our school districts in our ED279, that should be ED2, not 179, um, has a member allocation. So on page five of your ED279, you have a line that says ESC member allocation. And our three combined school districts uh, benefit at 76,679. Obviously, MSB33 gets a little less because of their size, Mattawas a little more, and then SB20 gets a little more, but that's our combined allocation. So there are financial benefits for being in the ESC uh, as well. Uh, and then finally, um, obviously, because we're in partnership, we get to share the costs of what we have. Um, each district could not afford all of these services alone. We, we know that each district could not have uh, that shared administrative staff. Yet by having that shared administrative staff, you get people who focus on their thing that is a strength for them, uh, and therefore you get a benefit. The other way to play it out would be to have one person doing all of those things. So you would have one superintendent who would be your financial director, who would be your innovation director, who would be your food service director, probably, I don't know, nowadays. Um, so those things would be um, quite tasking for an individual. Uh, so you can see the, the breakdown. We have the uh, interlocal agreement that bases it on a 50-50 formula of attending students and community evaluation uh, for the upcoming school year. And my numbers might be a little bit off to what Lucy will share with you at the end of this meeting, but essentially SED 27 is about a 50.8% share. You can see the breakdown by their uh, five communities. Madawaska is a sole community uh, at 33.7% and then SB 33 at 15.5% and you can see the breakdown between Frenchville and Senegal. So this is just a reminder of why we have Val Unified. You will have people say, now that the school's gone, why are we still doing this? This is why. 
this is why it, it you know it costs money to do business and the more you want to implement and have for your students and for your services and for your organization um, you're, you're going to either have to pay it yourself or you're going to have to get creative with how to do this and i think we've been very creative over the years any questions That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. I'll do that. Okay. Now moving on to the next item of business, committee reports. First three is a policy, GCC, remote participation. Oh, I have a couple more items, uh, Chairman, under Executive Director. Oh, so maybe I could just uh, yeah, uh, discuss real quick. Uh, just the next item, item B, um, just want you to know that we used to have statewide executive uh, director meetings. Those went away in the COVID days, uh, and even though we're still in COVID days, um, we've had some executive directors reach out and are trying to uh, reignite um, this process so that we can start sharing. So we do have a uh, an initial meeting set up for next week, February 10th, and when we meet next, I'll report out to you on you know what the statewide executive directors are thinking and how we're sharing some ideas, and, and I'll report that all back out to you guys. Um, the item C is the value implied shared services uh, contract information. This was a question after last meeting uh, from Mr. Jandro. He, he, uh, he asked, you know, it would be helpful if we could see uh, what the contract, uh, the contracts are under value unified. So you, you should see, did I include that in there? Um, so you can see behind me, and I think it's in your packet. Yeah, this one right here. So these are our shared. Um, these are our shared um, contracts. Um, so you you'll see all of the administrative contracts. You'll know that they are two-year contracts, uh, and they're all currently under the 2021 to 23 term. Typically, what we do is when we re reissue contracts, you know, coming up for this year, it, it's reissuing a, a two-year contract. Um, so that's what we've that's what we've always done uh, administratively. Uh, so you can see where that is, and then we have our shared teacher information. Depending on what bargaining agreement they have in their district, that's where those individuals fall. So Jenny Bechart is under the Madawaska Collective Bargaining Agreement. Michelle Charnick is on an annual contract because she is a JMG employee, so uh, she's a contracted service. Uh, Don Rossiel, who is the alternative learning uh, teacher at the Tech Center, is at Will Employment um, under Adult Ed. Connie uh, Coutier, is the French integrator, is under uh, a three-year contract. Connie has um, recently resigned to take a position in another district, so we'll be looking at how to fill this integrator position specifically for Valley Unified shortly. And then Gloria Corbett, who also should, uh, helps with continuing ed, is also at Will Employment. Um, so you can see those are our current contracts. Then we have our shared programs, and it's essentially what I highlighted in the presentation to you guys. And Marie did some, some wonderful work here. So you'll see some dollar amounts and you'll see some dates on this document. It's not fully completed just because of how much work it is to get all of that information. Um, some of them are annual, some of them are, are uh, multi-year so that we could save. Some of them are paid by each district, some of them are, so you can see the, the different varieties there, but uh, she did a really good job at highlighting what those all are, what they do for our district. I don't know if we had any administrators who wanted to report out on anything, sharing, either. I suggest that I wasn't here last meeting, so um, if you have any questions for me regarding the work that I've been doing, I've been spending a lot of time moving information into solid schools for the middle high school. Uh, we are pushing out our first semester one grades, and um, we're learning a lot as we're going along. I think we've been certified to solid schools for Power Teacher Pro. And then I'm also working on a lot of efficiency visiting programs um, as part of the transfer. So I've been doing a lot of work with that. But if you have any questions for me, I'm available. I've been living in college for years. Thank you, Sharon.
challenge with uh, my report. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. Uh, is there any questions from the board? Seeing none, we'll move over to the next item of business uh, committee report. The first read from all to be TV for no participation in board. Yeah, so each of your districts have adopted policy DEV um, in, in a way to allow for board members to participate remotely. I think we qualify under each of our boards, but I think officially we should, as a value unified board, adopt this. Uh, it's the same language that falls into the 3327 in Madawaska policy. It's a boilerplate. All I did was change uh, school board to, to or 27 or 33 Madawaska to Valley Unified so you can see. And then I changed all the references to superintendent to executive director. So this is just the first read uh, and then we can adopt it next meeting with the board so choosing. Questions? Okay. Uh, item nine, item two. The business, uh, there's no old business, uh, new business. Let's see, for city for 2022 and 2023. And Lucy, in your budget presentation, do you go over the subsidy that we are receiving? Very briefly. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think I highlighted it in your notes. Um, this is a, a, a preface to Lucy's presentation. Um, and I did also in my presentation, but just a reminder of, of the subsidies that we get for participating in Valley Unified. Uh, next school year, we're set to get 76651 for uh, the superintendent's, half of the superintendent's salary and benefits, uh, financial software, 54085 power school will be paid by the DOE, and then our member allocation. So at least 208415 just for being a member of this team right here. This is your mic. Lucy, I can turn it over to you for... The first read of the budget. You have three sheets in front of you. Uh, did you email it to Toby? I okay. I'm going to email it to Toby right now. Okay. We'll start with the long sheet. There's only a single sheet not taken. And we'll go through how we calculated mm -hmm. the percentage of the cost share. Well, there's three sections on that sheet, and the middle section is actually where we calculate the percentages. I take the EGT 79 that we receive from the department for each district, and I look at the average attending pupils that we reported out, and, and that would flow through on that report. And for uh, this fiscal year, Madawaska will have uh, 402 attending pupils, and that's at October, 20, uh, October 1st, 2021 information. Uh, SAD 33 will have an average of 241.5 average attending pupils, and SAD 27 has 833 average attending pupils. That includes all pupils that attend in that district, including the tuition to towns. And then the other section that, that um, helps calculate the percentages is evaluations. And I use evaluations that come through on the EDT 79 as well. And in most cases, that's a three year average of valuations for each town and they're reported there and then so that gives me the percent of pupils as relates to total attending pupils and it gives me a percent evaluation as pertains to total percent evaluation and the two uh, at 50 50 gives me the percent of what each district will be charged so in the case of Madawaska, they'll be 33.56 percent sad 33 will be 15.74 percent and MSCD 27 will be 50.70%. So the total budget, those are going to be the contributed. So if we go back to the top section, um, I've, I put a summary of the budget on the left hand side, and we'll go through that in a minute. And then I've applied, um, I'm estimating a carry forward of about 50,000 to be applied to the budget. The DOE reimbursements, the uh, superintendent percent contributions from the Department of Ed and the financial system and time clock system. Those are the two components that will come into play here. The other portion that Ben mentioned on the ED279 that because of the part of the EESP, that comes through on your own individual budget. So you'll see these two sections as part of the EESP. The other, the other contributions are part of your own ED279 at your district level. So a net, in this case, we'll, uh, I'm proposing a net assessment of 582,000 
and nine. And I'm showing it based on cost centers because that's how I have to report it to the Department of Education. And MSAD 27's portion of that would be $295,020. Last year was 286, so an increase of 8,771. SAD 33, proposing 91,725. Last year was 87,385, an increase of about $4,300. In Madawaska, uh, 195,264 as compared to last year's 189,959, an increase of about $5,300. The bottom portion of that uh, section shows you what the percent contribution is per town. Um, I've often been asked, you know, how much is San Francis or how much does New Canada or how much does uh, San Francisco or Canada get contribute specifically to the ESC? And in order, to, there, it's a little bit different because now I'm, I can only factor in the resident students. So that's the difference between the, the, the two calculations. The bottom section only take, takes into account the resident students as pertain to each specific town. The valuations are the same and the percentages vary a little bit. So you can see that Madawaska's percent is still 33.5% because they're the only town in that district. Uh, Frenchville contributes 8.8% of the total VUSC budget. St. Agat, 7%. Fort Kent, about 35.2%. New Canada, 3.6%. St. Francis, 3.5%. St. John Plantation, 2.4%. And Wallagrass, 6%. So that gives you an idea of the, 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 how, how each town contributes to uh, the value unified budget. Any questions on that so far? I'll, I'll go to that next, okay. next section. The short sheet is simply the, the summary of, the, um, of the, the, the revenues. So as compared to last year, the proposed operating budget last year was 730,000. This year, uh, first draft is 762,745. Last year, we received 70, 75342 towards the direct executive directors, the 55%. Uh, this year, they're proposing 76651 Last year, the cost of the financial software and the time clock plus was 51000 This year is 54000 And the increase there is we're using it more. The time clock system has been really beneficial for us in that um, not only, especially when EPL came into play, because now we have to track everybody on an hourly basis. For each 40 hours they work, they earn an hour of EPL. The time clock system has actually allowed us to do this very easily. We've just set everybody up uh, with, a, with a, a clock in. It uploads directly into our financial system, and then we can keep track of both and their pay easily. And then I'm proposing using uh, 50,000 of the carry forward as opposed to what we used last year, 40,000. Or a net district assessment of 582 as compared to 563 from last year. And again, the, the, the power school does come into play, but it's paid directly at the, at the state level, and we don't see on the direct cost, and it doesn't flow through us. So now the other two sheets that are stapled together. I'm basically proposing a very similar budget to last year because the, the at the central office section, there isn't not much has changed. We're still the same five people that are covered in this uh, in the central office in terms of the salaries. Uh, the only one that there's the superintendent, assistant superintendent, the director of finance, food services, and uh, Peter uh, Peter Karen's role of the innovative coordinator. Um, Sharon is part of Value Unified, but she's shared at a different percentage. So I kept her at the district levels where she shared uh, 30, 30, 30, 30, one third, one third, one third. So in the board section, that's the this board and any expenses or any uh, stipends that you would cover. Uh, no increase there, same as last year. The legal services I've kept the same. Where we're gonna be working on the ILA, I anticipate that we may have some charges as pertains to legal because we will want to have that reviewed uh, not only individually as a district, in each district, but you'll also want uh, a, a legal uh, review at the VUSC level. 
The second section is executive administration. That's the superintendent, assistant superintendent, and uh, the innovator uh, role. The increase there, this year's COLA increase is 5.9%. So the salary increases on here are based at 5.9% increase. The health insurance is actually uh, projected at a 10% increase, but last year's budget already had that 10% in. It didn't, it didn't happen. So the, the, when I'm comparing budget to budget, it's the same level as last year. And the other small increases are just um, the fight as pertain to the salary benefits and a uh, slightly decrease in tuition reimbursement. The central service, the, the central services, that's my salary and the, basically the, 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 the general functions of the central office. So you're copying your posters, those kinds of costs. Uh, salary increase of 5.9% based on COLA, health insurance, same as last year's budgeted amount. The uh, purchase professional services, that's your time clock plus, whereas the technology related software towards the bottom, the, the increase of 6,000, 6, that's your uh, financial system. And the financial system automatically increases by 5% each year. The vehicle operation and maintenance, the, the parts of supply, that's for the van that is owned by Valley Unified. And the other 2,500 next page, that's for the transit bus. In the event that we need to do minor repairs or buy some a few uh, minor parts for it. And the last section is your food service uh, director. We did increase the number of days that uh, she works for the district uh, and included a 5.9% 5 5 increase. And that's basically, those are the changes I'm proposing for this year. It's basically kept, um, we do, I do project a carry forward, um, probably in the 60, 65 range, but I can't apply it all. Uh, I need some cash flow to make sure that we can operate. So I'm proposing increasing the carry forward to be applied to the budget to 50,000. So when we're following through on your columns, column B, the 762,745 is your proposed total budget, which is an increase of last year of, of, of 32,725 increase. The, and the, the column E is your anticipated state revenue to offset it. So that's your director, your executive director contribution and the financial system and time clock. Column F is your carry forward to offset it. So the net assessment to the district would be 582,000. Half of that is based on the tuition, the, 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 based on the, the number of students, the percent of students. Half of that is based on the valuations. So what the JKL and MNO is the calculations of that per district. So your, your last three columns are the value for each district. So column P proposing a, an assessment to SAD 27 of $295,020, which is an increase of 8,771 over last year. Column Q is SAD 33, 91,725, which is an increase of about 4,300 over last year. And column R is in Madawaska, 195,264, which is an increase of about 5,300 Madawaska over last year. Any questions, comments, concerns? This is just the first read, so we'll have time to look through things. Uh, and then when we start, you know, going through our own individual budgets and factoring this in, you know, that's when we, we may need to make adjustments. So, uh, like Lucy said, a lot of this is essentially uh, the same, uh, the same numbers as last year. It is factoring in a cola increase for for the employees. And that's essentially the the, the, the the biggest change. Can you find the cola setting? It's it's published every year um, in December, late late December. Not the Social Security cola. So 
Any other questions? I will see. Okay, we better choose some meeting dates. Next well, meeting dates. Uh, it, it was brought to my attention that the next meeting for this board um, would be in, in a couple of weeks, February 14, which is Valentine's Day. Um, I'm not a gambler. I don't know about you guys. Uh, I don't know that that's the right move unless uh, we can turn it into date night. I, I don't know. Um, probably not a, a, the best choice. So I, I don't think. Yeah, I didn't know um, if the board wanted to consider another date. Um, I will let you know that uh, the meeting after that is set for uh, March 14. So we currently have a budget budget workshop number two, uh, February 14, and then budget workshop number three, uh, which is the week we should have an adoption of the budget is, is March 14. I guess the first question is, do we agree that February 14 Valentine's Day is probably not a good date in this, or do we want to go with it? I can make it up to my wife, but it's up to you guys. I'm fine. I think it's a good After 40 some odd years of marriage. After 60 months. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. Well, I've got 12 months. Okay, so I guess maybe with the best way to proceed is I'll I'll message all of you and see can you confirm to February 14 if we have a quorum then we can move forward. If not, I'll I'll send some alternate dates between March 14 uh, February 14 and March 14 so we can get together for a second read of the budget. Does that sound like a good mm -hmm. strategy? Yeah. yeah. I'm just wondering how much time you need for the second presentation of the budget because it's pretty clear, made a great presentation. I can predict that you will probably come for the budget and it may not last too long. Well, I know the board wanted to also have more further discussions on the ILA. Uh, when I look at March, excuse me, when I look at February 14, um, every district will have had a chance to meet. 27 did uh, last week, uh, 33 will next week, but Madawaska is only meeting after February 14th. Uh, they're meeting on the 28th. So uh, we wouldn't be able to have ILA discussions uh, on for February 14th anyway. So it would simply be for a second read of the budget only. Right, which is, so I'm wondering if the second read of the budget could be at the next scheduled meeting. Which would be the March 14th. Which is ILA. Well, yeah, which I don't know. Just a suggestion. Yeah. So, table the next week till the March 14th. I think we would have ILA discussion and the final read of the budget at that time pretty well to consider anything worth a collective time at that time. Yeah, Toby, what do you think about that? Are you okay with that plan? Well, that works for me. I had thumbed up before, but you guys were talking, so I'm good. Thank you. So let's move forward with that plan, and I'll notify uh, Keith and, uh, and, and Gary as well. Favor. Hey, have a good evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.